Hey, didn't see you there. Just got back from a bike ride on my Wabi Classic. It was about low 40s and it was pretty windy as well, but I wanted to go over some of the clothes that I wear when cycling for maybe about an hour or two in the cold weather. And this is gonna serve for clothes that you probably already have. You're not gonna have to make a lot of sacrifice when it comes to money because you probably can use things that you already have. So let's get right into it. All right, so pretty much, let's go through what I'm wearing from this angle. I'm pretty far away. I've got on some jeans. I've got on a jacket with synthetic down. I've got a scarf. I've got a flannel shirt. And underneath, I've just got a basic t-shirt. Jeans, belt, I'm wearing some thin wool socks, not super thick wool socks, but pretty thin wool socks. Vans, actually, let me go and show you guys. Vans, sneakers, flat soles. No waterproofing, nothing like that. This was a dry day. So overall, this is pretty much all you really need if you wanna go ahead and just go out there and get some miles on your bike. You don't have to spend a ton of money for specific cycling equipment like shorts, um, long thermal cycling shorts. Long thermal cycling wear can be extremely expensive and one cycling jacket is like $350. This jacket, 100 bucks at J. Crew on sale, keeps nice and warm. This flannel, 30 or $40 from uh, L.L. Bean. This t-shirt, $10 or something from Banana Republic. These jeans, $60, not your run-of-the-mill $20, $30 Wranglers, Lees, but you can use whatever jeans you want. I just like these because they're nice and stretchy and they're easy to ride on the bike. No, no fancy socks either, and you saw my shoes. So now that being said, you probably are going to have to invest in some things. Now you can see I actually have my helmet on because you should always wear a helmet. So if we take the helmet off, you see this weird looking hipstery, whatever you want to call it, cycling cap? Well, this actually serves to keep my ears warm and it's actually a very warm cycling cap. You may have to go ahead and invest in one of these because your regular beanies, your regular beanies, such as this one, if you're accustomed to wearing these on a cold winter day, this will keep you nice and warm. However, this pretty much, the helmet doesn't go anywhere near fitting over it, so this is pretty much deemed unusable. So I would invest in a thin beanie. I would invest in a thin beanie or a thin hat like this one. If it's not that cold out, you could also get one of those, uh, what do you call them? The headbands that wrap around, I have one for like mild days. I have one for a little bit warmer days with the North Face. And then this one's just pretty much for super cold days if I'm out there. I don't go out if it's below 30 degrees Fahrenheit just because then you're at risk of hitting black ice. So those are two things you're gonna have, probably have to invest in. Also, if you don't have a shoe like this that has a flat bottom, then it's a good idea. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier. Your feet aren't gonna be slipping all over the place. I don't think running shoes would work at all. Riding a bicycle, doesn't matter what type of pedals you have. If you have those Converse, if you have a pair of Vans, obviously, some of the sneakers, like the Nikes, have flat soles. You could do that too. Really, you just want a sneaker that's going to have something that can the pedal can bite into, so that it's not gonna be like you're pedaling on ice cubes, basically. But overall, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna show you guys my bike right now. You're gonna see how to set it up so that you can just wear plain clothes and go ahead and go for a ride. And the nice thing about this bike is it has a leather saddle and flat pedals, which means I don't have to wear my cycling kit to ride this bike comfortably. I can wear plain clothes. I'm pretty much right now just wearing Vans slip-ons and a pair of stretch jeans, I think from Banner Republic. But regardless, the leather saddle is not gonna tear up my jeans and it just makes it really easy. You can wear whatever shoe you want with these pedals. These are by fixation, so they do have little spikes in them. So you get plenty of grip. I almost forgot, gloves. You are gonna need gloves when it gets below 50 degrees because your hands are out there on the handlebar, whether you got a flat bar or a drop bar like me, my hands are like that. Your hands are probably gonna be like that. I do have these leather gloves. You can wear these, but why would you mess up a pair of leather gloves? These are supposed to be nice and stylish and formal. Save those for when you're dressing up and have to look more stylish and presentable. I've got these gloves. These are pretty expensive. You don't have to go Castelli, you don't have to go cycling specific, but you do wanna make sure you have something that has some water resistance, decent warmth, and not something super bulky. Because remember, you're gonna to have to be able to reach the brake levers and easily move your hands around. And a lot of you are probably gonna be riding a bike that you shift on, so you're gonna to have to 
reach the shifters and you want your hands to be you want to be able to use your fingers and your hands relatively easy. You don't want to be wearing big mittens and then all of a sudden you really can't hit the brakes in time and then you crash or something like that. So gloves definitely, we can't forget about those. All right, so there you go. There you have it. That's how to get a couple of miles in during the winter time without having to go through the hassle of getting all dressed up to in your cycling gear. If you just want to get out there and pedal around for an hour or so, just do a couple of miles. It'll also help you because to go through to get like a cycling jacket and cycling shorts and overshoes, you're talking over $500. You could easily spend $1,000 on cycling equipment. But the nice thing about this method is you want to make sure you're actually going to get out there. It's never fun to spend all that money and say it's too cold, I don't want to go outside anyway. For $1,000 you can buy a really good indoor trainer and probably get a better workout overall. Whereas if you go outside, it rains, it snows, there's ice, there's wind, there's cars. Sometimes it's just easier to do it a simple way or ride the indoor trainer. That's going to do it for this one guys. As always, thanks so much. Subscribe if you feel like it, if you like these videos. Hope everyone has a great day, have a great night, stay safe out there on the road. See you next time, and as always, thank you. Goodbye.